This is the Alhambra Investments Weekly Market Pulse, where we check in with Joe Calhoun and get his take on uh, what happened the previous week. Uh, Joe, w- there were some headlines last week, and you you indicated these in the in your weekly piece that you wrote. But uh, uh, inflation is soaring. Another said inflation is at a forty year high. A uh, third one said groceries and Christmas presents are going to cost more. And all the exports on TV are just doom and gloom and inflation. So as a contrarian, I have to ask you the question, has inflation peaked since everybody's talking about this now? Yeah, I think it might have. <laughs> I kind of had the same thought. You know, I was looking at all these headlines. Everybody's talking about how, oh, my God, inflation's awful. Everybody's talking about it. It's on TV every 10 minutes. Uh, and, you know, we had this inflation report on Friday, the CPI, I guess it was a 40 year high or something like that. But the bond market just went so. <laughs> so, you know, the bond market doesn't care. I, I you know, I just I think people uh, for some reason, I don't know, it seems like people want to concentrate on the negative right now. And I'm not sure exactly why, but I think inflation is peaking. Uh, look, there's some things that could go wrong here that, that mean, you know, that maybe it's not. But I think in general, I think you're probably seeing kind of peak mania on, on, on inflation right now. Well, you know, there's that old phrase that says when everybody jumps on the bandwagon, it's too late. So, well, you know, I, I, I kind of jokingly referred to Muhammad El Arian, who it's funny. I, I happen to have CNBC on right now. And of course, and there he is. He's on there all the time. The guy, I don't know, does he get paid by CNBC? Uh, Allegedly, he still works for Allianz. But this this guy, I mean, he's a really smart guy. It's obvious he's smart. But, oh, my God, he's never right. (laughs) And he's saying that this is the biggest mistake in, you know, the history of the Fed or something. It's like, really, dude? I I, Come on. They made lots of mistakes. This can't possibly be the worst one. Uh, but I kind of feel like if, if he's on the bandwagon of saying inflation's out of control and the Fed has to do something, well, it's probably over with. Well, is this a Fed issue at all? I, we've said from the beginning, you know, we don't think it is. This is uh, this recession and response to COVID was a supply side recession. Uh, it's not something that most people know how to deal with or know what to expect from. But we knew from the beginning that you were going to see problems when you open up the economy again. Uh, people's demand comes back quickly. Supply takes longer. Uh, And we're still dealing with some supply issues. But, you know, the bottom line is that the demand is much higher than it was prior to COVID. You know, we we, we gave everybody a bunch of money and and they they couldn't go out and spend it on travel, for instance. So they spent it on goods. But retail sales now, we're almost two years uh, into COVID here. uh, And retail sales are still running at a pace that is higher on a higher trend rate uh, than they were prior to COVID. So, of course, you still got supply problems. Um, eventually, that's going to come back down. Or, listen, I say it's going to come back down. Maybe it won't. Maybe we've had a permanent shift here in, in consumption patterns. Maybe we're going to have a permanently lower uh, spend on services and a higher spend on goods. I don't know. Uh, but either way, it will eventually work itself out. If demand is going to stay high and, and, and for goods is going to stay high, uh, then supply will catch up. And if it falls back to the previous place, well, hey, we may end up with an inventory problem. Who knows? Uh, that's one of the things that Jeff Snyder's been writing about that, you know, there's been a lot of overordering and double ordering and so forth. But look, it'll work itself out. The Fed doesn't need to do anything to fix the inflation problem. It's not really an inflation problem. Well, let's uh, talk about the, some economic news from last week. Uh, not a lot. Most of it was positive. Um, but tell me what you saw in the Jolts report. Well, I mean, look, the Jolts report is one of those reports that, uh, you know, Jeff has done some work trying to back out of the Jolts report and see if it lines up with the employment reports that we get. And it does. And the bottom line is there's a lot of job openings. Uh, There are still the quit rate. The quits rate is still very high. Uh, The hires rate is, you know, lagging a little bit, but that kind of lines up with what we've seen out of the establishment survey. But I still say that the thing that's missing out of the employment statistics is what's going on with these uh, new company formations. We know that new company formations are still running at a rate that's much, much higher than it was pre-COVID. And yeah, a lot of that, some of that, maybe even the majority of that is people shifting from being an employee to being an independent contractor. I get that. People forming escorts and so forth. But the uh, so-called high propensity firms which are ones that have indicated they're going to hire employees. 
that number is also running way above where it was pre-COVID. So look, there's a lot of things going on in the labor market we don't really understand, but we do know there's a lot of job openings and we know that there's, in fact, there's more job openings than people that are unemployed. So um, there's maybe a skills mismatch. There's a whole bunch of things that are working there. But look, I don't think it's a negative to say that you've got a, you know, 11 million job openings in this country. Uh, if you've got 11 million job openings and, and, you know, a million people to fill them, then that's not so great because you, you could end up with a problem there. But it's not the case. Look, it, it's, a, it's still pretty close. But the bottom line is that there's a lot of job openings and there's a lot of people, uh, a lot of churn in the labor market right now with the quits rate. That hasn't changed. Uh, and I guess eventually it will. Uh, as we move away from COVID, but it hasn't yet. Uh, those things are not negatives. Well, in conjunction with what you said, people going from employee to contractor, uh, the new company formation numbers are looking really high. Yeah, I mean, look, that, that like I said, that is part of it. But there is this high propensity firms too, where you're, you, you know they're going to hire employees. They've indicated they're going to hire employees. Uh, that number is also very high. So, I mean, it's not just that churn of, Hey, I've been working from home for you know a year and a half, and I don't want to answer to the boss anymore. So I'm going to form a separate company and and do it as a consultant or whatever the case may be. That is certainly part of it, but it's not all of it. What about that slight increase in uh, consumer sentiment? Yeah, you know, look, it's a it's a small increase, but hey, it's in the right direction. <laughs> I'll take my positives where I can get them. You know, uh, consumer sentiment numbers have been falling pretty steadily over the last few months, and we did get an uptick. Uh, in the preliminary number, uh, up to 70 something, uh, 70 or roughly, uh, up about three points from the from the previous reading. Uh, it's not great. Uh, it's still way down from where it was, uh, but it is at least starting to improve a little bit. We'll see if that turns into a trend. Right now, it's one month, uh, you know, not even a month. It's a preliminary number. We'll get a, a, an update at mid month, uh, or excuse me, at the end of the month, and see where we are. This was not in your article this week, uh, so I may be throwing you a curve, but um, uh, we've got about three weeks left in the year. What should investors be keeping in mind uh, the rest of December and going into the new year? Well, I, I just think you need to focus on the basics. Uh, the basics are, are, are that the economy uh, in the fourth quarter has accelerated uh, from third quarter, but you know the long-term picture really hasn't changed all that much. Uh, I think that, you know, the bond market tells you that it hasn't changed. The long term growth outlook hasn't changed that much. So I think you just need to, to, to stay steady and not get too uh, upset about anything that happens in the market over the next few weeks. Uh, trading volume tends to be kind of thin. You can get some exaggerated moves. Uh, so just just take it as it comes and we will get ready for next year. Uh, this is our last weekly commentary uh, that I'll do this year. I'll spend the rest of the year uh, working on our outlook piece for 2022. Uh, I think it's going to be a really interesting year. So start thinking about next year. Make sure, make sure you've got everything done for the end of the year. Any tax losses you want to take, you need to get those things done. Make sure you've got your RMDs done. Uh, things uh, that, that, that are, are time sensitive, uh, get those things done. So other than that, I think everybody should just have a happy holiday. Uh, it's been a long year. Uh, let's take a little time off at the end of the year here to, to, to think about what we can be thankful for and look forward to next year. 